You're watching Explore the Bible Sunday School Lesson from Redbud Baptist Church. Redbud Baptist Church is located at 801 Slide Road in Lubbock, Texas, and the Sunday School it starts at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday. Grab your Bible. Let's study together. Hey guys, uh, this is Explore the Bible. Uh, this is our Redbud uh, lesson group that we're going to be in Luke chapter 18 verses 9 through 17 and the, the title of the message is going or the Bible study I guess the message would be if uh, you're behind the pulpit but it's going to be worthy but yes there's definitely a message in it uh, God welcomes those who approach him in humble and simple faith and I have Linda here help me again this week to lead this uh, lesson and I'm going to turn it to her as soon as we pray I, I do want to give a quick announcement um if you're seeing this right now, you're probably watching it on our new YouTube channel. Just be sure to subscribe to that uh, because of uh, having an older uh, Google account, uh, which used to be called a Google Plus account that the other one was writing on. We probably had some security issues that the, they finally shut down uh, in the background. I mean, it, it's still up there in the foreground, but in the background, you couldn't upload videos. You really couldn't stream anything. So um, we had to move over to a new station or a new channel, as they call it. So please subscribe because if we get over 100, we can give it a unique name again, which would be a lot easier than forward slash 14,000 letters and numbers and under dashes and all that stuff. So please, uh, if, if you need help doing that, call us and we can see if we can get someone over there to help you um, go ahead and get um, get it done and get subscribed to the thing. And then, of course, once you get subscribed, every time we put a video out on YouTube, it will notify you that there's a video out there. So. Uh, we appreciate YouTube and all that they're doing because it's a free service and it helps us get back out to you guys in one of our ways. And, of course, you can always go to our website, uh, redbudbaptist.org, and, and go ahead and look there. Uh, we usually load up the messages, at least up there, and it has links to our YouTube channels as well. Uh, keep in mind, anything that I send you guys in Remind, which is the text message, they actually convert that link. So it's not the same link that you can type into your browser if you know what i'm talking about you may not but if you type in your internet browser you won't get it so uh what they do is they have a security option there in between to keep safety for students because mostly reminds used for schools so with all that said thank you for being a part of this thank you for being faithful um we do have two services coming up this uh sunday linda we're going to have yes. traditions at nine in the morning and you know, I guess that's 30 minutes earlier than what we were getting here before. <laughs> so uh, some of us are going to be, have to be here even earlier than that. And then uh, we're going to have our Sunday school, which is being called Red Bud Groups. And it's just to open it up to other times, other places, other nights, if we can, to get everybody in the Bible, not just those who can come Sunday morning. And so that will be at 10 to 10. So you'll have roughly 10 minutes to get to class. Um, it sounds like if you're part of uh, our, our our group over there in the old adult five area and stuff like that, that, that they may be meeting in their separate rooms and yeah. kind of see what the timing is going to be. And that way you'll have time to do your Bible study. But then our uh, second service is going to be at 11, 11. So 10, 10 for, for our Red Book group Sunday school. 11, 11 is for the what would be called bridge, which is more of a contemporary contemporary or modern service and you're, you're more than welcome to be part of that too if you want so it just depends if you like the hymns um or if you like uh the contemporary or it depends if you want to get up early or not it, it's open up to you i mean we're just providing both because some people are a little bit more comfortable worshiping in the traditional service and some people are more comfortable worshiping in a contemporary service and we want that to happen but most of all what we want to happen is people they're coming to worship, but people having an opportunity to meet other people and, and help lead them to Christ, develop that relationship, start discipling. Because it, I, I don't, it doesn't matter what we do as far as uh, the music, as far as the decorations or how pretty things look or anything like that. If we're not having a heart for the loss and heart for building each other up, a heart for discipling and leading others to Christ and, and actually our own walk, Linda, <laughs> you know, yes. to Christ. And showing Christ, then it won't matter. You know, mm -hmm. it's still not going to be blessed or growing. So to have it blessed and growing, it has a lot to do with us coming alongside yeah. and humbly, you know, following uh, 
Christ's lead, as the Holy Spirit is leading us to be more Christ-like. So with all that said, <laughs> be praying for it, please. <laughs> because there's a lot going on, a lot going on these last couple of weeks and weeks this one. There's going to be cards going out to everybody to 5,000 homes. That should be happening next week. So if you live in this area, you'll probably get a card from your own church. It won't say South Crest or, you know, North whatever. It's going to say Red Bud. So you're going to think, that sounds familiar. <laughs> so hopefully. Hopefully it will. <laughs> but it'll be advertising that. And you can use that to give to someone else and invite them. Remember, invite your family because we're actually starting these first two weeks just as a startup. And then it gets a little bit uh going to do our, our Easter service, just one service at 11-11. And then uh, when we go back that week afterwards, which is the 11th of April, that's when we're going to go back to the, the two services and the kickoff, if you will, of the new new format. Yes. So please be praying for that. If you guys have any suggestions or ideas, uh, please be a part of that. But, you know, send people to the web page. The, the information's out there. You know, send them to the Facebook stuff. However you want to do, just uh, invite people and uh, start building those relationships with new people to to bring them to Christ like we always should be doing. Yeah. Great, The Great Commandment and then the Great Commission, right? <laughs> so love God, love others. You know, reach out to others and teach them all I command and disciple them. So, yeah. Praise the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you. There's a lot going on. And I know that that is confusing for a lot of people. So, Lord, help us be able to straighten it up in our minds and our hearts. Lord, let's look at all the opportunities we have here to share with others the gospel message that you gave us. Share with others the relationship we have with Christ so they can have that relationship too. Share with others the foundation that we have that's through your Son. Lord, share with others how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. Share with others how your word is so important in our lives. Share with others how praying and quiet times and Bible study is all important. And share with others how to fellowship together, encourage each other, lift each other up, strengthen each other as a fellowship the size of our church should do. So, Lord, even in this message here today, let us learn something about you that we can teach others. Let us not only keep it in our hearts, but pass it on to others. And Lord, as always, let the Holy Spirit lead this. Let your words be spoken, not ours. Lord, be with Linda as she teaches it. And Lord, um, take away anything that's not needed. And Lord, let us keep everything that needs to be done. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we're kind of here on a, a late afternoon. <laughs> so usually I say, you know, grab your coffee or, or, um, your Bible and a donut and stuff like that. I guess it would be more your iced tea. And uh, but always grab your Bible and uh, do the Bible study with us. Okay, we're in Luke. Like you said, the passage of scriptures that we're studying is in uh, chapter 18, verses 9 to 17. But the book that we study out of suggested that we start reading in Luke 17 and read to the end of chapter 18, um, or start in chapter 17 and end in chapter 18. But uh, some of the things that uh, I brought out in the book of, of Luke in chapter 17, uh, the first 10 verses contain four sayings of Jesus. In verses 1 and 2, Jesus taught that temptations are inevitable. They're going to come no matter what. And uh, then Jesus urged uh, us to rebuke sin and try to be more forgiving. And uh, then uh, in 5 to 6, Jesus promised powerful results for those who put their faith in God and try to follow him. And then we skip down to the 17th chapter in verse 11 through 9, 19. Jesus healed 10 men that were afflicted with leprosy. Right. And only one came back. Only one and he came was back. A Samaritan. And uh, so. I think he, it shows another thing about the Samaritan again, right? Yes. I mean, it gives an idea of, uh, yeah. Yes. Back to the, who's your neighbor, you mm -hmm. know. That's so true. 
But uh, I'm sure the other men were grateful that oh, yeah. they were healed from leprosy because they were no longer shunned by their groups and yeah. their and you families. Always got to remember these guys are going to be walking around and they had to say unclean, unclean, yeah, unclean. Yes. In fact, I want to say the lepers are actually you know outside the city and yes. stuff like that, and like a, a they have their own little community, yeah. but it's out there somewhere. So yeah, there was a and it was a pretty terrible thing to have and. Evidently, it was very contagious. Very so. contagious, uh, very common, and yeah. uh, um, and you know you're going through all that stuff with the skin stuff. Plus, you're being shunned by all your family and everybody yeah. else in the Jewish community. <laughs> so it's like, man, what a pity, you yes. know. <laughs> and then uh, in just continuing in chapter 17, uh, Jesus responded to a question from a Pharisee about when and how the future kingdom of God would come. And Jesus replied that uh, the future of the kingdom was now. and But God wasn't to come again for a while. But his return would catch the people by surprise, he said. Right. So don't worry about that. And then he urged vigilance and faithfulness until his return. And that's where we are now. We have yeah. to be vigilant and faithful. And what we're doing. Yeah, he's talking about being prepared for that, you yes. know, too. Yeah. Yes, to yeah. be prepared to get ready. Because he is coming again. Yeah. He is. And then in back back to verse 18, then we're back. Oh, chapter the, 18. I mean, chapter 18. I'm sorry. You're fine. Uh, Jesus urged his disciples to persevere in prayer. You know, what? that yeah. is such a... An awesome thing that we can actually go to God on our knees. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know, we're thinking nowadays and now times is, um, you know, you say that a lot. And, mm -hmm. and I guess, you know, the more, you know, since I'm doing, you know, ministry and pastoring and things like that, it, we just say, you know, we'll pray about it so much. Yes. That, you know, and and I, I really mean it. That's legit. I mean, you know, we need to be praying about this and I need to be praying about this and pray for it. But, uh, you know, sometimes we use that so much that it becomes just like a, a default answer. <laughs> but really, it's important. It's it's so important. It, and, and I think of it as it's aligning your heart to what the, the you, know, Holy, you know, God's wishes are to you through the Holy Spirit, obviously. Right. And so you're trying to get that all back in align the way it should be. I mean, God knows what's best for you. And that's our form of communication yeah. with him. So. And our humble and simple faith, like that verse that. You started off with the, our lesson today, a humble and simple, simple faith. Yeah. But um, when you look at people praying, um, the, the, the two areas that you see the strongest prayers to me the, the, is to do with children, mm -hmm. you know, especially young children when first learning to pray. It's just as sincere as can be. Yes, it is. And then as we get into some of our older, more mature Christians who's been walking with the Lord for 50, 60 years. And you're just sitting, it's like you're sitting right in there praying with them, but you feel like you're you're praying right there in the presence of the Lord <laughs> because of how, you know, that relationship yes. that person has had with praying with the Lord that they developed over all these years is so strong that you can just feel the presence there when you're praying with them. And yes. that's incredible. It is. And that's what Jesus told his disciples time and again, you know, let's yeah. pray. Multiple times just before going to the cross. <laughs> you know? Wake up, uh, start well, praying I, again. I think that's when we pray. Our deepest prayer sometimes is when we're going to be faced yeah. with something. And that's when or he was, we're going you know, through yes. something. He talked to the Father all the time, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, you can see how it, it became even more critical at the times he was getting closer and closer to the cross. And, yeah. uh, you know, spending the whole time there, you know, hey, Lord, if this is your will, take this cut from mm -hmm. me. But if not, you know, I'll follow through with this. And um, we do that, too. Um, sometimes uh, we get so busy that we forget that we need to be praying all the time. And, you know, it's just it, it seems like in the times of need, we'll pray, mm -hmm. you know. So we're coming to God with this list. <laughs> well, you know, and sometimes you can just see something going on. And just right then, you can just lift up a quick prayer. Yeah. Just be ready all the time to pray. You know, just to uh, thank you, Lord, for, yeah. you know, thank you, Lord, for helping me remember that. Man, if I forgot <laughs> that, that wouldn't be bad. You know, just little things like that, you know. But uh, uh, 
you know, Jesus constantly interacted with different groups. Yeah. And this is all of his witnesses that he's doing. Yeah. You know, I used to think that uh, parables were real. And, but they're stories that Jesus told to make a point. Right, right. And, uh, yeah, we just wonder yeah. on one of them whether or not it was a, a parable or not a parable because <laughs> they, they actually used a, a name. Yeah. Not, not just this lady or this man or whatever. It actually says the mm-hmm. name. And then they're like, okay, yeah, the why would he of, put a personal yeah. name in there? So is that a parable that's a real thing that's going on? You know, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, one of his parables that he used a name in was Lazarus. That's correct. Remember That's the what I'm beggar about. at the yeah. at the door, just, and just later, have a, yeah, a little, later a, on a the rich man yeah. went to hell, and he went to heaven, and yeah. and the rich man cries out to send well, Lazarus, is, yes. just with a drop of water. Drop of water, because <laughs> you know, and, and it's a so. I hadn't thought about that in a long time. It's a it's incredible. In fact. We have multiple parables we've been doing over this in Luke, you know, yeah. one right after another after another. But they definitely point to a very serious uh, yeah. illustration or a very serious point to this illustration. Yeah. And it's a teaching. And, you know, a lot of it was towards the Pharisees and Sadducees and stuff. And the, <laughs> it was. And the Jewish leaders. Oh, but, yeah. But, uh, and he was, um, he was so good to his disciples. Yeah. You know, Matthew was a tax collector. He was. <laughs> then today we're yeah. going to study some more. You put that in the category of during that time scum of the earth, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he has fishermen, which probably wouldn't be considered the top of the, the list either, you know. No. And no rich men. <laughs> no rich men were in there that I could tell. Um, let's see. There was, I don't know what Stephen did, but. Yeah. Besides getting stoned, but but, but Stephen, yeah. you know, it seemed like by the time, guy. definitely by the time he became a deacon, you know, when first deacon, mm-hmm. he was definitely, you know, man of, uh, uh, you know, a good account, you know, good mm-hmm. all that stuff. So by the time he's in there in that area, he's already moved on to fully following Christ. So whatever he yeah. might have been before. So. But all through this, Jesus works with his disciples, he does. teaching them, keeping them going. And then to get into our lesson today is in Luke 8, 18, verse 9 to 12. And I'm going to read verse 9. It says, He told this, this, this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. Right. Now, this is, comes after the story or during the story when the, when the uh, Pharisee gets up to pray. And everything. Right. But this little part, this little parable that he's going to use here does make a lot of sense. <laughs> and sometimes we, we we have to study these two chapters to get ready to teach. And we wonder why they pick out this particular parable, you know. And, and chapters 17 and 18, there are a lot of things going on. But the writer of our lesson decided that he would go with this parable. Yeah, and, and, and each time, you know, this is yeah. Lifeways material here, and and when they rotate through Luke again, they might cover a little bit different yeah. part yeah. of it. So they they you can't teach it all. There's just so much. No, there isn't. And and that's even with two quarters being done with Luke. With Luke, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what are we going to do when we get to Acts, another yeah. book that Luke wrote? But anyway. Jesus had been teaching his disciples as he traveled towards Jerusalem. Right. So we know what's going to happen in Jerusalem. But uh, he's been teaching these parables as they go along to help his disciples learn. Right. You know, Uh, because I don't know. I think some of them were Jewish, but not all of them. All of his disciples. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Luke trying. was a physician, and he came to love the Lord a little bit later than. Yeah, uh, we Matthew, talked about Mark and John uh, when, when Peter had the dream mm-hmm. that you know take the, the these uh, animals and kill them and eat them mm-hmm. that type thing. And surely, Lord, I cannot you know mm-hmm. like go call things unclean that I you know that I, I made and stuff. Anyway, uh, and then he went to a Gentile. And the Gentile had the Holy Spirit on. And I don't know if that was the first time. It's the first time it's mentioned in the Bible that yes. a Gentile did. 
so they knew that they were saved too so it kind of reinforced the idea that the gentiles could have it uh but yeah there's um there there are certain parts of the gospels that are being written to gentiles certain part mm -hmm. of the gospels uh, writers yes. that are writing to the jewish community as well so it's kind of one of those things that um you know well we, it was in the beginning of luke weren't we told that he was writing this for a particular person yeah that was uh a uh, lover of God. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that that's true. Um, but of course, we can always say, what that, was that a direct person, or was that a a church or a group of people or mm -hmm. what? But we still think it's probably just directly to one person. Yeah. And so it's, it seems like he's trying to lay out the whole, you know, gospel story, the whole um, disciple part. You know, why it's important to follow Jesus and all the stuff that Jesus is doing, all the teachings. So it looks like he's actually putting together something that to help teach this person he's writing to. Yeah. So because it, even in one part it says that he contacted Matthew. Right. And everything. So had Matthew already been written at this time? Possibly, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. There's different theories on which one was written first and who borrowed from who if they did. Um there are things that are included in different parts of the gospels books. It's mm -hmm. not included in the other gospel books. And, of course, any time that you guys can grab a parallel, you know, that's going through all the gospels together, that is so neat to do. Yes, it is. And you can see what, how, and it actually starts uh, confirming how close these were to each other, these mm -hmm. eyewitness story. Of course, you'll have places where, you know, someone's talking about these three ladies and, and the other person's talking about those three ladies, but they could have all been there at the tomb or wherever mm -hmm. it was. And you may be talking about the lineage of, um, you know, to, to Jesus through Joseph or mm -hmm. the lineage through Mary. So there's well, different things about you know, it. But. A couple of weeks ago, we had an, another Pharisee that he talked to. And this time, he's I think he's uh, talking to another Pharisee. Right. But uh, they evidently tried to keep tabs on him. Yes, Maybe definitely. even were in the crowds with other people. Uh, when people will consider themselves spiritually above others, I, I always think, oh man, I'm not above anybody. <laughs> well, we think that, but sometimes we act a different way, don't we? Um, we so, always, uh, um, I always consider sometimes, you know, do we have one face we put in front of people when we're at church or doing churchy things? And then we have this other face when we're at home and we're doing other things, you know. Um, there's some people that seem to have more of a, um, almost like a trivial pursuit of the Bible, you know. <laughs> they're going they're going to whip you at everything about it. But are they the ones going to be out there spreading the gospel and stuff too with all that knowledge they have or, yeah. or, or be a teacher in yeah. one of our classes or something like that. So, you know, sometimes it's like, okay, it's nice to have all that knowledge, but you got that knowledge for a reason. To yeah. be able to share it with others, and that's um, and, and we have to do it humbly because yes. if, if we come in there with all this, I'm better than than you, yeah. And you see that in the Pharisee, so but we do that. We'll come in and say, well, you're sinning here and you're sinning here, and we'll forget, like I said last week. Hey, uh, do you know Jesus? <laughs> you know, yeah. Let's start there. You know, let's yeah. start. <laughs> well, let, let Jesus do the changing in people's hearts. You know. <laughs> but the title of our lesson is worthy. Worthy, yeah. Worthy. Are we any of us worthy? I sometimes feel like, you know, goodness. But we are worthy. Yeah. We are. But, if we've but accepted Christ as our Savior, then we're worthy. But if we think about the righteous yeah. feeling these guys had, um, I think that was actually putting some, some uh, blinders in their eyes mm -hmm. to actually see that the Messiah is right there walking in front of them. Yeah. And, you know, because of all their righteousness, they couldn't. They couldn't humbly accept that. Mm -hmm. And and so if we do stuff like that, we're going to miss out on things that God's doing around us just because That's we right. can't open up and get beyond ourselves to see the, the what's going on around, around us. us. Yeah. Well, this was um, a Pharisee, and uh, the story that we're going to talk to you about today right. is a Pharisee and a, a tax, tax collector. collector. Yeah. And so two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. Yeah, in verse 10. Yeah, yeah, in verse 10. And the unusual thing about this is we didn't know that tax collectors were even allowed. 
in church they were pretty well looked down on and we've we've studied this before yeah but, so, i mean just to review it the tax collectors they were usually jewish people mm -hmm. they were hired by, by the Romans, Romans to, or, you know, the, the government or whatever, to be the ones that's collecting the tax in that area, right? They did probably take, skim a lot so, off the top, yes, you know, to keep themselves. Mm -hmm. So really, for uh, other religious people, they're going to be thinking, these guys are pretty much traitors. Mm -hmm. You know, they should be helping us, and what they're doing is hurting us and taking hurting us and taking advantage of that mm -hmm. by, by taking our money. So that's just a quick review yeah. of what was going on. That's why they were despised. They were despised and looked down on. But uh, they both come to the temple to pray. And so it's probably not on the Sabbath because it's just the two of them there. It's almost like the start of a joke, you know. Yeah. These two men, you know, one yeah. was this and one was that. And, you know, <laughs> we, we started all those jokes that used yeah. to be pretty bad back when you were growing up. But uh, the Jewish people, one of the things we studied, said that... Uh, they had three times a day that they prayed specifically, nine and noon and three o'clock. Correct. So that was kind of unusual, too. So it's one of these times of the day that these two men happened to be in the temple together. Right. And so in verse 11 and 12, do you want to read those or do you want me to? I can do 11 and 12 for you. Okay. And it says here, sorry, the Pharisee, Standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even like this tax collector. Mm -hmm. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. So he is pretty uh, full, of himself. Yes, <laughs> full of himself. So. He, they're both standing here praying. Yeah. And maybe he's even a little... Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say uppity, but I think that's what he was. He was a little uppity. He's right. in here to come and pray, and and there's somebody over here in the church with him or in the temple with him, and he's a tax collector, for goodness sake. Yeah. <laughs> and I, so You know, um, and, and usually when they're praying or worshiping in the temple, you know, it could be a, a series of things. They could be yeah. bowing. They could be kneeling, standing. Uh, lying flat on the ground, like they call a lying prostate. You know, you're laying flat on well, the ground. This this verse says that they were standing and praying. Yeah, so. yeah. So it comes in different ways, but yeah, they. Um, um, I think you know when we start thinking about it, you're trying to show more uh, humility. You know, when you're doing mm -hmm. the ideas, you know, when you're laying prostate in front, yeah. you know, you're just, you know, I'm I'm totally yours. I'm kneeling to you. You are my Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, over me. So, I know that one of the times when uh, the uh, when I guess was when Nolan was still here, mm -hmm. it was one of the first times that we had had a group of children come to do Disciple Now. Yeah, and we opened our house to some of them. Yeah, and uh, she, the young girl that Nolan had picked out to teach, some the of group, the college yeah, leaders that came to my house. She actually had the girls get down on their stomachs yeah and pray and also she had them wash feet and hands yeah and we use that a lot as yeah, illustration of so serving weird. each other yeah. but yeah but definitely the the totally surrendering yourself yeah. to the lord you know so you're, you're you're taking that position now um as you get older you think do i have to go all the way to the ground well there's still times we do yeah. And, 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 you know, we'll, we'll figure out a way to get back up off the floor and stuff. But it's just, Lord, I'm, I'm totally surrendering to you. Mm -hmm. You are my Lord, totally. Nothing about me is my own. It's all yours. I think that's what she was probably trying to teach Absolutely. them then. Yeah. This, this isn't being humbled. Yeah. This is laying your life down for the Lord. Yeah. And I thought it was just beautiful. I'd never seen a young girl. You ever seen that? students do that, right? <laughs> it's a, no, I love students. But but when you see students actually start doing stuff mm -hmm. like that, I mean, it, it you know, speaking from a youth minister point of view, yeah. I mean, it just totally uh, humbles your heart too. It does. You know, you get to see that that there's things moving through these people. I mean, when we go to camp and and seeing them worship and praying, and their life is just so busy that you don't even get the chance to see that and observe mm -hmm. that. And at the camps and some of these D-Nows, they get a chance to uh, slow down enough to 
look at scripture and, and pray and listen to you know speakers and worship together and you know anytime i know i'm a little biased here but anytime you can support help pray for youth groups and of course children's mm -hmm. departments and everything yes. please do i mean that's our future and the more you support those groups the more we're going to see families here right. being part of that group because they're going to realize well gee this church thinks this is important mm -hmm. and if it's important to them i want to be a part of that I so, hope that's how they're feeling. Absolutely. I pray yeah. that. And, you know, of course, in this world right now, when you don't have a lot of, um, um, a lot of people discipling mm -hmm. and, and, and turning people towards the Lord, even the, the few that we have and the few minutes and the times that we do have, and they have hours and hours and hours of this media and other, other sources and resources that have, that is not, putting anything in there in mm -hmm. fact if anything it's actually putting down any mm -hmm. type of thing about christianity and following christ and so um it's a it's a hard area uh i i am totally humbled by anybody that surrenders to it and, and helps with that because it's a, it is a sacrifice but it's a necessary sacrifice because mm -hmm. it's just not enough in the world right now so any even us as adults and older adults or, or wherever our walk of our life is right now it doesn't stop you know, we're still to be still should be discipling people because right now where the world is mm -hmm. um we, we know who's the king of the world at the moment yes, <laughs> but we know who the king of our heart is and who should be and who's yes. going to take over the throne as well Amen. so but this pharisee's standing and praying and uh what got me is is he's so uh self-absorbed He's not thanking the Lord that he has. No, he really is not, is he? All of this stuff. He says, you know, I, I thank you, you that I'm not like others. Yeah. But, you know, but he has everything. And he is not thanking God for that. He thanks God that he's not like other people. Mm -hmm. But greedy, unrighteous, adulterous. Or even like this tax collector, he says. But then he starts going on with what he does do. He fasts. He gives a tenth of everything. Yeah. You know, he it's doesn't all, have to remind it, God. It, it's all going doing. through the motions and stuff, too. You know, yes. you know, you got down to, you know, and, and even there's times there where they're talking to, to the Pharisees and other religious leaders. Yeah, you, you guys have all the, you know, the, the, the scripture mm -hmm. stuff as far as the ceremonial stuff down. But, but. I don't have your heart. Yeah. You know, you're not thinking of me. You're thinking about how you look to those around you. You're not, you know, I don't have your heart. Yeah. So what it says here, this question here, it says, we sometimes look down on the Pharisees, you know, when we're reading through all this stuff, rather than recognize the danger of us being like him. Yeah. How can we guard against religious pride? We need to, yeah. I mean, how many times have we saw it? you know, thought in our classes that, hey, you know, I guess we think we're pretty self-righteous, don't we? You know, we don't have this and we don't have this sin and we don't have that and we don't do this and all this other thing. And why can't that person be more like me and stuff? And I mean, the list goes on. And Linda, we're all guilty of that at one point or another. Um, um, if, if you're not, then you're lying now. So you need to ask yeah. forgiveness too. So, <laughs> but, but it's really hard. Flavors, we must safeguard against religious pride. Yeah. We have to. We'll, we'll look down on people coming into our our, our uh, sanctuaries, into our mm -hmm. Sunday school classes, no, into our houses. There's nothing wrong that this this Pharisee was fasting twice a week. Oh yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing that he gets a tenth of everything. Nothing wrong with that That's either. That's all great. Yeah. That's all great. But uh, what isn't great is he's judging this. Right. So he's using it as being yeah. superior over yeah. this other person. Yeah. And of course, we know right now in, in our life, if and it wasn't for Christ, we wouldn't have he, anything, yeah. right? The Pharisee knows, recognizes this guy as a tax As a tax guy. collector. It's not like he's running in there and say, hey, I'm a tax collector. Hey, I'm a Pharisee. You know? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no. But, uh, it, you know, it's it, it's the church where you come in with a name tag and that one said tax collector. <laughs> No, he probably recognized him Absolutely. and wondering why he's even in church or something. But uh, we've got to be welcoming and we've got to uh, 
I guess have a warning too. You know, like you said, we're all sinners. None of us can well, escape that. Well, didn't we see a thing like with Peter too, where yeah. he, uh, you know, he he was all with the Gentiles. You know, he had the dream and all that stuff and everything. Going there. And he, he's he's with them. And wasn't there a time when the Jewish people showed up and then he kind of left eating with, and, and fellowship with the, the Gentiles and got moved over to the other side. <laughs> and I think Paul got on to him, you know, telling him, hey, <laughs> this is not right. Is, yeah. You know, they're all welcome. But here's the tax collector. So let's talk about where the tax collector was. So in verses 13 and 14, it says, but the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. Rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I hope we're trying to be humble. Uh, and I like the the buts he kept putting in there. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So That's Jesus a, compared the Pharisee, the tax collector, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, standing far off, Mm -hmm. I'm not even worthy to approach the altar, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not worthy to approach me there. Um, you know, he's also got, um, he's not responding to the Pharisee's insult, but he's actually involved, you know, looking at if it was verbal, obviously, but he's actually looking to his own relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wouldn't even lift his eyes up to heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, have mercy Lord, I don't me, have, yeah. I'm not even worthy mm -hmm. to even look towards the heavens because you know i am a sinner mm -hmm. and um you know and we know <laughs> no one's beyond sinning mm -mm. and everybody's has sin but um he's looking at that and the tax collector was actually looking at the other guy <laughs> so he was looking at his sin mm -hmm. and the tax collector i mean and the pharisee was looking at the tax collector's sin too you know instead yeah. of looking at at what his own sin is so you're at the altar leaving your stuff there saying to the lord I'm only approaching this, and this is, you know, your will, mm -hmm. your will, Lord. And uh, the tax collector was doing that, but the Pharisee was not. He was basically saying, my will, my will. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. But uh, he kept striking his chest, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's It's an emotional thing. Yes, it is. I mean, you know, yeah. maybe that's something we we should learn, too. Because, you know, sometimes we, we're so stoic in, in our worship service and everything like that. It's almost like we're statues. Yeah. Honestly. And, uh, you know, it's an emotional thing. You, you're, you're putting out all your heart to the Lord. It, the worshiping, the praying, the asking for forgiveness, the, you know, let the Holy Spirit, you know, search me. If there's any anything, you know, yeah. right now, let's get it out. I, and I have it. found times during worship. Or during prayer time or something that I'm just weeping. And I'm like, well, Linda, straighten up. And yeah. then I think, no, that's that's feelings coming out. Yeah. Something is. is I mean, God gave you the you. feelings. Yeah. And, you know, he wants you to be thinking about him. He wants you to have that ability to mm -hmm. love him. He okay. wants you to have that ability to choose or not choose. You know, he, he wants that as well. But he made us human. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, at times be emotional and you know it seems like you know because it's a relationship it's a love relationship mm -hmm, it is well but uh jesus affirmed the kind <coughs> of person who humbles himself and the kind that exalts himself so that's what he's trying to do is show us that there's there's a different believers must confess their sins to their father mm. and that our father mm. In heaven, looking down on us, and I know there are, there are times that I've realized that what I've done was a sin, and I try to confess that. But then there are other times I'm thinking, Lord, if there's something I've done that I shouldn't have done, please forgive me of that as well. But uh, we must confess our sins to our Father, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I hope that we're humbly doing that. But like the tax collector in his in this parable, he only hoped that his sins would be forgiven. Yeah. 
And the Pharisee guy only hoped that he's just better than a tax collector. <laughs> you know, so. It, it says here, um, Linda, it says, how would you describe godly humility? How would you respond if you could look at yourself in a mirror of God's holiness? So mm -hmm. obviously, when we look in the mirror and see ourselves, um, you know, it's quite dark compared to God's holiness. Yes, it is. And, um, but we do know that we have our, our, our um, faith in Christ, and that's where our sins are being covered. So God's view of us going through Christ is is, is white as snow, right? Right. But um, we got to look at ourselves and see humbly. I am not a righteous person. There's nothing about me righteous except for my Savior, and he's the only thing that's making it righteous. That's right. You know, so I need to humbly stand on the other side of the hat, you know, so that God's viewing me <laughs> through through Christ, but the other people are viewing me through Christ as well. Yeah. So sometimes we get in the way of our own um, ability to reach people for Christ and our own ability to show people Christ. We we seem to stumble over our own stuff, and it's not it's not usually, you know. Sorry, one second. I promise you, I'm not sick. <laughs> A lot of dust right now but yeah. um anyway a lot of people when they're talking to people or worried about talking to people i'm going to say the wrong thing or do the wrong things but a lot of times we're, we're not you know if we're doing this humbly then we're going to say the right things Hopefully, yeah. you know god's going to make it right anyway but yeah. if we're going to come up there and start saying well you know i've known jesus and that's why i'm perfect and everything <laughs> <laughs> that's just not going to do it no but uh, no we need to have a childlike faith. Yeah. And in verse 15, it says, Now they were bringing even infants to him that they might touch him or touch them. And when he, the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. So uh, the disciple, people are bringing infants to Jesus. And then uh, when the disciples saw him, you know, he's rebuked him. And you know, he doesn't have time for this. You know, he, you know, he's doing important stuff. So. And in verse 16, I guess it says, uh, But Jesus called them to him, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for such belongs to the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not, or truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. So, yeah. you know, humble to the point of a child. And a child, I mean, all out. Mm -hmm. All out. Loving the Lord all out, trusting Jesus all out, you know, not questioning it, you know, hasn't got open his books mm -hmm. to all these things about all these questions and set out, well, does that apologetic work really work? And does this theology really work? None of that. It's just, um, you know, faith like a child, blind faith, yeah, I, I, unconditionally loving, not even anything beyond, you know, not even looking to anything else. Mm -hmm. I, I trust in, in that way. And and that's kind of what we're supposed to have with that humility. You know, it's a, it's a godly humility. Um, so the tax collector here is still kind of in that way. You know, he's got this uh, humility that I'm just laying it all out to you, Lord. I'm, I'm, there's no filters here. Uh, it's all out there. You know, and and so that's the same humility and same humble stuff that we see in a child. And the childlike faith is just all i mean i like to think of it as authentic mm -hmm. you know just as, as, as pure and as simple as it can be and we just make it so complicated and throw That's in all right. the the extra stuff to it and and um so he's saying bring that child to me you know don't you know, disciples think oh they're not worth the time that this is you know for sylvia this is uh Bring up your children here in, in, in our in our church. Be sure to support the children. Bring the children to Jesus. And that's what they're trying to do. And of course, uh, Louise Odom and stuff over in the preschool. Just oh, yeah. As awesome as can be, teaching them everything. But it's so important to do that. But he's actually using this as an illustration, too, you know, that, that you need to have that childlike faith. You know, if we don't have childlike faith, then we shall not enter the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that's the faith that we're truly, no question, trusting christ as our savior yes. and and we'll be with him and when the kingdom comes so anyway a lot of uh, illustrations here for us as far as uh um, 
know, the tax collector compared to the Pharisee, you know, the faith like a child, humbly approaching uh, God and, and um, you know, with that, this humility, not self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. um, I know we tease a lot about self-righteous, but sometimes we need to look at ourselves mm -hmm. and see, are we being a little self-righteous? And we need to bring ourselves down, you know, yeah. we need to let the Holy Spirit look at that and say, you know, you're just getting a little bit too full of yourself, James, or, <laughs> or a little too full of yourself, Linda, and um, bring us back to our, our ground. Because it's it's real easy to do. It sneaks up on yeah, you. Yeah, it does. Um, we just forget. You know, we forget. But we we need that childlike faith. Yeah. You know, do you remember when you accepted Christ? Yeah, that's the uh, on yeah. fire for the Lord. I mean, uh, just beside myself is what it felt like, you know. Well, you know... Uh, We've experienced God. We have, and we need to show that. But uh, how do we ex show that we've experienced God's kingdom? You know, we've got to love others. Correct. Right. Even, even today, we need to pray for our leadership. You know, we may not be yeah. the same faith or the same uh, political party that's governing our country right now but we still need to pray for them yeah yeah so whether you, yeah. you you're you, you know democrat republican whatever it doesn't matter doesn't if matter. you're a christian you need to be praying for your leaders if they're right. if they're democrat republican whatever you know it tells mm -hmm. us that god put them in in that place no. for a reason and yes. we may not know what those reasons are but we're still supposed to be praying for our leaders yeah and um you know i was talking a little bit about my one of my friends last night and you got to the point he was saying, you know, it's just getting really hard. He said, you know, coming out of their church the other day, you know, there's a guy that came by on a motorcycle and, and flipped him off. And I know, hopefully I don't have to explain what that is. Yeah. And I was talking to him, you know, the, the thing about that is, you know, you really don't need to be judging them or anything like that. Mm -mm. You know, the, the two things. Some religious person may have. Right. You know. And that happens. But I said, you know, because we were talking about all this other stuff and how churches may have some troubles here pretty soon, a meeting. Just doing mm -hmm. regular stuff. I mean, we've had places where, you know, already where they want to know uh, what the preacher is going to be preaching on and stuff like that. And I guess what? So they can edit what he's going to say and stuff. And yeah. and, and so there's these things going on, making it a little bit harder. And, they're getting, you know, we're not facing the persecution of some places, mm -hmm. but we're not as open as some places are, too. No, we're not. But regardless, Linda, regardless of anything like that, our focus, our should... focus is still the same. Yeah. It doesn't change no matter where we are in this world mm -mm. and no matter where our government is in this world, no matter where our churches is in the world, no matter where we're putting our head down, you have the great commandment, mm -hmm. love God, love others uh, yeah. as yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you have the great commission, you know, reaching all of them Go with the gospel, yeah. baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, you know, and teach them all I commanded and, you know, disciple them basically. And uh, surely I'll be with you into the end of the age. And he's got all the authority to do that. Mm -hmm. So the, it's like, okay, this biker guy or whatever, you know, got on a bike. It's like, well, you're still going to be praying for that man. Yeah. You know, pray for him. That doesn't change mm -mm. because, you know, that's, that's that stranger. That's that neighbor. That's the other person that you should be, be reaching out to. And maybe, you know, someday you'll have the opportunity to share Christ with that person. And their heart has been changed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you pray for that. That's awesome. But. You know, if we go around just pointing at all these other people and what they're doing and stuff, whether they know or not, then, you know, we're, we're the Pharisee again. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> well, at least I'm not like that biker, you know. <laughs> you know? But, you know, oh, and of course, I'm, I'm hitting a personal point here because I know Linda is a biker and she, <laughs> her and Jerry rode motorcycles quite a bit across the country and stuff. But we ride with a different group. You do. There's a different <laughs> attitude there, obviously. <laughs> But and nothing against this, nothing against my buddy or this. I, I'm just trying to, and, and mostly I'm talking to myself because, no, you know, I'm talking too, to myself, yeah. you know, I'm trying to get my heart and head wrapped around this world and, and get myself refocused on what's still the plan yeah. and what's still the way I'm supposed to move forward, you know, keeping your eyes on Christ, you know, getting everything straightened back out, stripping away all the things that encumber us as Hebrews talks about. Put, put my focus back on the Lord. And, and with doing that, hopefully all these other people are coming alongside yes. and, and following with you. So your path is going to help others follow that path as well. So <clears throat> it is hard. It's like a constant battle. 
you know, I, you know, I used to laugh about, you know, well, all these uh, people older than me that knew exactly what they're talking about. You know, you get up daily and the, that's the first thing you do is focus on the Lord and, and, and Lord right now, let's strip away all this stuff so I can start this day off correctly. Right. You know, and I'm thinking, wow, man, those guys just, you know, <laughs> they, well, from day love, day, but I that's what you have to do. The morning. You have to. That's the morning. You know, I get up before Jerry. I got up before the kids. Yeah. And that, that's a good time. Yeah. Good time. Uh, mine good usually time ends up Lord. being in the evening a little bit like that, too. It, it just depends. It, it might be throughout the day, different times yeah. where I can actually stop and, and focus for a moment. And it's like, wow, that was awesome. Um, it needs to be the morning, though, because the morning will help set that day off correct in the first place. And it's like, you know, what would they say? Um, they used to say something like, um, can't remember. I, I guess it's just focusing on the cross right off, you know, saying goodbye to your old self <laughs> right off, you yeah, know, confessing all that thing, having, getting everything, yeah, yeah. And, and and start looking for him to lead you for the rest of that day. And then, you know, mm -hmm. wake up the next day and do it again, you know, so. Yeah. So say goodbye to your old self <laughs> and, and uh, move to your yeah. new self. Anyway, there's a lot in here and a lot in, in different parts of Luke. So uh, today, working through mm -hmm. your quarterlies, obviously. And, yeah. Uh, Luke is a very, uh, man, detailed, very, uh, very good book to be studying. Yes. Incredible about the gospel. But again, mm -hmm. don't keep it just to yourself. Spread no. it to others. And we have all these opportunities coming up. Don't don't let those go by. Man, part of uh, not seeing God at work, when you haven't seen God at work in a while, you know, you're not looking. <laughs> so, no. so keep keep together on this keep looking for god being his lead and and, and you know where he's at work and join right in whether as a well and and in all of this we got to remember that jesus knew where he was going absolutely he knew but he took time he's going to the cross <laughs> yeah. yeah so we've got to do that too we've got to take a little time to share with our neighbor our loved ones uh, and you know like last year you gave me a uh, a book to take and share with someone. Yeah, and I've tried to, but with COVID, it's been hard. It's a little bit harder, but it doesn't. Uh, but it doesn't yeah, mean you stop too. No, you know? we haven't stopped. <laughs> you know, we haven't stopped. And sometimes the lessons we went through, we talked about over the phone. And uh, we're starting again. We're starting again. Uh, we're using the same Bible scripture that you gave me last time, and we're starting over. Nice. And she wants to to get deeper, and I'm I'm just is you it, know is it the disciples path stuff that you're yeah. doing? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, So we 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 started and then we stopped, and then we would do some over the phone, and then she would go on vacation, I would go on vacation. So we've started again. Yeah. And I told her I said if you want to let's just start over. Yeah. And she's okay with that. And she's already written down some of the answers. And yeah. So, and, um, so just to let you know. guys in on that, I mean, that's the whole thing with the circle that you see next yeah. to Red Bud. You know, we're, we're trying to work with M's. You know, and it was meek, uh, meet, make, you know, mature, mm -hmm. mobilize, and multiply. And so you're yeah. meeting people to make them disciples, but you got to meet them and evangelize them. You know, you got to point that relationship first, you know, right. and then you make disciples when they accept Christ as their Savior, you know. And then you start growing them. You're teaching them all the basics, you know, what, and, and mm -hmm. you're not just showing, you're not just uh, telling them, you're showing them as well. So you're trying to do things as you go along and they can see Linda at work as a disciple. And that, that's going to carry much stronger than just doing well, some scripture stuff. One and, other thing I wanted to tell you is that her husband has joined us. No way. This time. Awesome. Awesome. So, Wow. That's the way it works, too. <laughs> that is. That is. And that's why she said, you know, it was her idea to start over. Nice. And so we're including her husband. And that's the beauty of this, too, because, you know, when you start up another person, you know, uh, and you never really stop helping that person or leading that person or letting them be part of your life and stuff and mentoring them, um, that, that continues on. But you're going to be looking for another person. You're going back from the beginning again and start that process again, <laughs> restricting yourself. Re you know, so but it, that's what you had told me when we first when you first asked me to start this. Yeah. And so she was eager to start. 
we got started, COVID came along, uh, and then we kind of got off track and would just pick it up here and there. Yeah. But now this time I'm going to stick with yeah. it. And, and remember, guys, it's it's a it's a process, you know, yes. that you're going through. It's not a program. It's, it's a way of life. Um, we're going to have a, probably Greg, I think, is, is going to come on and help us a little bit more doing the discipling stuff so mm-hmm. I can concentrate more on our uh, – uh sunday school red bug group stuff as well you know there's just a lot going on we're spread so thin around here but i think that's what one piece is going to be doing but mm-hmm. if you if you have someone that you want to disciple right now and start working through i have material for you to help guide you i'm not trying to make it into a program it, it but i'm trying to get it up guide. into a, a, a process and uh in this case it's a, it's probably a one-year program in the long run it is. Um, how you set it up but you're just um you know you're walking with christ and this person's walking with you as you're walking with Christ. So <laughs> it's a commitment. It is. But it's it a beautiful a thing. It really is. And um, we need that. That's going to give people a lot stronger foundation. Um, and whether they're part of Redbud, which I hope they will be, or another church, that they'll, they'll be a, a strength to that church growing. I and I hope they're a strength That's to our church I'm growing. But, for, yeah. but most of all, we're hoping they'll, it'll move them closer to Christ and even you know of course even in the beginning they accept christ as their savior and that's awesome and then well, it's, closer. it's moving us as well oh yeah yeah i mean it, you, it's you can't you know it's it. funny linda when a couple of christians get together and they lift each other up it just seems to happen that way i maybe god knew what he's doing in the first place right yes, he did. <laughs> absolutely he did. absolutely yeah. he was and, and guys uh again um you know that i'm trying to say this humbly with all this stuff because you know, I had to go through it. And I'm, you know, I'm looking for another person now. I'm, I'm taking my two boys. I got them set up so we can start walking through this. You know, we already did the, the, the men stuff before. You know, men in the mirror and all that stuff we did before. Good. And um, so we're trying to do that. But um, and I had another one before that. We all the way through. I've had lots of people that, you know, just barely start and then got too serious for them. And you know, but we're constantly looking for another one. I mean, you know. And, mm-hmm. and man, it'll be awesome that someone actually is not coming to Redbud yet, that, it, you know, I'm forming a relationship new and talking to new and then um, getting the opportunity mm-hmm. to bring them to the gospel message, you know, allow them to accept Christ, you know, move forward in baptism and, and, and just, you know, step all the way through this disciple stuff from beginning to end. That would just be so cool. But, you know, of course, I'm praying that God's going to send me whoever he wants me to yeah. do. Yeah. But it's, it's a constant cycle and it's, it's, and you, you think about it, you know, we think about, man, looking in the future, how hard that might be or how much of a sacrifice that might be and stuff. But when you're actually doing it and you're walking in it, I mean, you, you almost, I mean, you, well, not almost, you do look forward to it. You know, you don't have this time with this young person or older person or whoever it is, but yeah. younger person spiritually and have opportunity. And plus it's moving you forward as well. It does. So um, anyway, that was our uh, public service announcement there. So. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and pray and let us go, guys. Okay. Uh, thank you for spending this time with us. Again, uh, humility is the key. So when we start seeing these new people coming to, hopefully to be a part of our uh, Red Bud Church, that we we approach them with humility, knowing that, you know, we can mm-hmm. get righteous real quick. And that's not the, the, the point here. The point is Christ. Yeah. And that's what we'd be pointing to instead of ourselves. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you. Lord, right now, just... Um, all of us that are represented here watching this video going through this bible study the two people sitting here right now lord just uh, search us now lord is there any part of us that is being righteous that's not your son that's making us righteous through his blood anything that's on our own Lord, let us confess it now. Lord, we just thank you for the forgiveness you give us regardless. And Lord, we thank you for the daily setting our mind and our hearts back to focus on you again. And Lord, please, please let people around us see Christ and not us. Don't let our pride and our righteousness get in the way of our opportunity for us to share Christ or show Christ in our work that we do daily. And Lord, let us take this life 
the, this lesson right now and apply it to our hearts <clears throat> and then to our hands and feet. And Lord, as we come on to these new services and these um, possibly mean new people, Lord, that, that you're, you're already picking them out and you're, Lord, you're already preparing them. Lord, prepare us to greet them, reach them, give them the gospel, disciple them, strengthen them, encourage them, and Lord, let them be a part of the family as well. Not just the family of this church, but the family of God. Lord, bless it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Linda. Thank yeah. you so much. It was my pleasure. Luke is a good study. Absolutely.